You've seen a few videos on connectivity in Azure SQL, but how can connectivity and the different options you select affect performance? Learn more in this episode of Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined once again by Silvano, a program manager on the Azure SQL team. Thanks for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Anna. And, you know, in the past few videos, and even we've done some videos with Rohit, and I've done some videos myself, we've talked about connectivity, and we'll link to those videos in the description. But I wanted to take a step back and kind of talk about, you know, at a high level, what are some tips and tricks? You know, Silvano, I know you have a lot of experience working with Azure SQL database and managed instance. What are some tips and tricks for kind of maximizing performance when it comes to connectivity? Yeah, um, you know, over the last uh, years, actually, Azure SQL started to introduce a number of uh, uh, flavors and uh, and capabilities around connectivity, uh, and some of these uh, options uh, actually do also impact uh, or have an impact uh, on performance, especially when uh, we are talking about uh, kind of highly transactional OLTP applications that runs uh, um, literally hundreds of thousands of uh, database transactions uh, uh, in a uh, relatively small amount of time, and uh, you know. Some of these uh, kind of uh, tips and tricks uh, that I learned over the course of the years uh, uh, may seem basic and uh, kind of good old common sense, but you know they actually uh, are making a big difference uh, when it comes to overall uh, application performance, right? Uh, you know, people may not realize that in in uh, OLTP applications, actually latency matters a lot, right? So. Uh, if you can run your application code uh, as close as possible to your database from a latency perspective, this will make a lot of uh, a lot of difference. Especially if your application is very chatty. So if uh, you know some of your business logic uh, requires a lot of round trips uh, and a lot of database calls in order to uh, you know process uh, your application information, it's very important uh, that you can run again uh, the, your code as close as possible. This means uh, from a, a cloud perspective, for example, that your application uh, hosts uh, should be uh, in the same uh, Azure region, for example, right? So avoiding cross uh, region connectivity, which can again introduce, uh, you know, tens of milliseconds in terms of in terms of latency. Um, you can uh, uh, from a Azure perspective, Azure SQL perspective, you can leverage some of the capabilities, like for example, uh, the connection policies. Connection policies uh, is effectively um, defining how clients uh, are connecting to your um, uh, backend database in Azure SQL, and uh, there are actually two different connection policies available. One is called uh, proxy, which means that uh, you go through the Azure SQL gateway every time you are connecting to your own database. And this gateway is effectively uh, adding a little latency on your end-to-end uh, -end, uh, kind of uh, uh, round trip time for, for applications. We also have this redirect the connection policy, which is instead, uh, you know, after the first connection happens uh, with the, still with the gateway, uh, is basically giving back to the connection, you know, to the application client uh, is giving back the uh, backend IP uh, pr uh, IP address of, of the database node, uh, which is hosting your database, right? This means that uh, all the subsequent uh, uh, requests uh, coming through that particular SQL, uh, you know, uh, that database connection are going to go directly to your uh, backend database node. And this means, again, uh, when there are, you know, tens of thousands of uh, database transactions, this means uh, a lot of time will be saved uh, and, you know, a lot more performance uh, uh, will be given to your, uh, uh, to your application. Um, some, you know, uh, very trivial uh, uh, recommendations, you know, will be to filter uh, you know, to make sure that uh, from your application code, you're actually only retrieving uh, uh, the columns and rows that your application actually need. Um, again, in a, you know, low, 
traffic type of application, this may not uh, make a lot of difference. But again, when you have uh, potentially thousands of concurrent users uh, uh, that are interacting with your database objects, tables and views and such, uh, making sure that you're only retrieving what you're needing can save a lot of uh, kilobytes or actually megabytes of traffic between your application and uh, uh, your database. And again, can make a difference between a, a very high performing application and, and a poorly performing application. Um, you can also, um, you know, find some uh, benefits by batching um, operations that are basically going between your application code and your database. And these operations can be both uh, kind of read operations, uh, like for example, you can uh, uh, request multiple result set as part of a single round trip uh, by batching multiple select operations, for example. And this can be done in your database command, uh, in your application code, or can be done in a server-side storage procedure. Right? This means that your client applications will then consume multiple result sets and will be able to process more data in a single database round trip. Uh, again, there are a number of good uh, uh, reasons to apply this uh, this kind of uh, uh, trick uh, to your uh, database access code uh, because you can actually reduce uh, uh, the number of round trips and make your application much more efficient. The same happens also when you are uh, inserting data into uh, Azure SQL database. You can find here in the in the slide and uh, um, uh, in uh, the video um, uh, comments. You can find this link uh, to an article that we wrote a long time ago, uh, which is still relevant about how to use batching to improve uh, application performance, uh, especially when you are loading data into Azure SQL database. And you can effectively uh, improve uh, your application performance by uh, several orders of magnitude uh, by using this approach rather than going with a row by row type of approach, right? Um, Connection pooling is also a very important aspect to consider when you are creating your applications. Most of the client libraries that we have for Azure SQL are um, offering connection pooling out of the box. Some of them are not, but it's important uh, uh, for developers to always uh, understand how connection pooling can effectively um, help uh, in reducing uh, this kind of initial uh, connection time whenever you are opening a, a new connection. Um, and instead, uh, you know, by leveraging connection pooling, uh, you can just pick up an existing connection from your um, from your connection pool in your local application uh, space and then save this kind of uh, uh, additional overhead in opening up a new one. Uh, last but not least, uh, we just announced uh, recently uh, new hardware options for Azure SQL, uh, including, for example, M-Series and F-Series uh, um, type of uh, uh, hardware hosts. And uh, these new hardware options are offering accelerated networking uh, out of the box. So you don't need to configure anything on your database instance, uh, and you can leverage uh, accelerated networking from all the client VMs and services that can uh, you know enable that option on the networking side? This is reducing to literally uh, you know fractions of a millisecond the round trip time that it takes uh, to uh, connect from within your application code to your database code, and it's making again a lot of difference uh, in your OLTP applications. Awesome! Wow, Savannah, that was a lot of things, but it was also a lot of things that I think you know you could implement today pretty easily. You know, you could take a look at your T-SQL queries that you're writing and make sure you're leveraging things like batching. Um, seems like you can set up accelerated networking uh, pretty easy easily sometimes. And the connection pooling is a new one for me. I wasn't. I'm not actually really familiar with that one, so I'll have to go look that one up. Yeah, I mean, connection pooling is a uh, again is definitely not a new. Uh, option. Uh, basically, uh, most of these uh, client libraries, uh, what they can do is the moment you're opening up a new connection with the database and 
then you are done with your uh, you know database work and from an application standpoint you're just closing it uh, by calling some of the uh, libraries method that we have instead of closing immediately that connection we are basically keeping the connection already open in the pool in the application memory space so that the next time the application is doing a open uh, is calling an open method on a connection which has uh, similar characteristics in terms of you know server name, database name, and such, is basically picking up that connection from the pool instead of uh, requiring you know, to open a brand new TCP socket with the with your kind of backend database, right? So that, gotcha. that option is already saving you a lot of time. Gotcha, cool. Yeah, so it's interesting, you know, these subtle things that can really save a lot of time. So thank you, Silvano, for joining us today on Data Exposed to learn more about some ways you can improve performance via the way you connect. Um, so if you like this video, please like this video and comment and let us know what you learned today and what you're doing as far as connectivity goes. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.